Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to We're Gonna Change. Today, we're gonna be talking about a victim. And some of you may agree or disagree with me at the end of this video. This could be a long one. Buckle up. All right. Um, I grew up in a really tiny town in White Salmon, Washington. Um, it's got a population of probably like 1,200 people if it hasn't gone up since I left. Um, I was raised by a single mom and have two older brothers. And um, once I was about 20 years old, I started thinking about joining the military. Um, I left for Fort Sill in 2013 and did my basic training there, and it was awesome. I loved every part of it. And then uh, AIT, I trained to be an intel analyst, and then I spent eight years doing that in Colorado. And um, once I got out, then I went to Hawaii to spend some time with my dad. All right, so I just want her to give her opening um monologue pretty much technically it's a dialogue because it's somebody on the other side of the camera so let me go ahead and um get you into the story she's going to explain all this stuff later i'm going to tell you the gist of it i'm not going to make you watch the whole thing because what's the point of that right so we're going to go ahead and get started here and then i'll i um, give my feedback oh so, even though I'll, I'll never know because she didn't talk to me about it um I feel like something pretty terrible must have been happening to her when she was a kid and going through foster care maybe or in juvie or out on the streets. And it seems like it took such a toll that instead of her viewing me as like her daughter and her child, it seems like she saw me as like a reflection of herself and just kind of like poured all that shame and hatred into me. Um, and that looked a lot like deliberately leaving me with people who were going to do bad things to me. Um, some of like the earliest memories that I have are, sorry. It's okay. Take your time. D do you look like your mom? No, not at all. Mm. I'm glad. <laughs> but uh, um, some of my earliest memories of some of the things that happened to me with a lot of people throughout my childhood was um, like smells and feelings and sights of like blood, like not full memories, right? But there'll be like little things that trigger like a little bit of a, like a shred of a memory. But um, as I got older, it became a lot more clear to me like what I was going to be expected to do with these people. And as I became more aware of it, I would push back because there's certain people, um, certain like, uh, I don't know how to describe them. Like, Okay, so pretty much what happens here is when she was young, around four years old, her mom would be going through a lot. Her mom had early dementia and all this kind of stuff going on, which happens a little bit later in her life. But around four to nine years old, she ends up getting put with all these men. So her mom would drop her off with these men who would do things to her. And what she's talking about now is that she eventually ended up fighting back. So she ends up... Um, well, every time she fought back and caused a scene and her mom couldn't get her to these men that were doing things to her, her mom would leave her in a in her room and would lock all the windows and lock the door and make sure she couldn't leave the house or leave her room. So anytime she gave up a fight, she would get locked in this box. This is all happening around nine years old. OK, so let's move forward a little bit. Like mindset about things like this, because. As a kid, like, I wasn't thinking like, oh, people are going to call me like a slut and think I'm promiscuous. As a child, I'm thinking, I don't know what this is, but it feels gross. It feels wrong. I know at least my friends, like, don't want to be naked around other people. And so, like, given that comparison, um, it just felt like I was, like, really fucking up and being gross. And it was my choice. And uh, that, like, over time, once these things stopped, uh, that just kind of became, like, my understanding of how to 
interact with men. Um, so around the age of 14, uh, it was beginning to taper off. And I got my first period that year. Okay. So when she ends up getting her first period, okay, her mother ends up taking her to uh, this plot of land, right? Takes her to this grave site and says, you're pretty much done. Okay. So this is her mom, remember, speaking to her as a 14 year old and says that you're no longer useful to me because at this point she can't get passed around like she's getting passed around. And for some reason, her mother thought that when she lost her um, innocence, even though she's not a virgin at this point because of what the men were doing to her, for some reason, when she grew up, her mom was pretty much saying, your body is useless now. Men aren't going to want you and this kind of stuff. And this is just crazy things going on. <clears throat> so she goes on to tell the story that her mother was not an alcoholic and apparently was never on drugs. However, she was just a psycho. She hated being with her mom. She hated being around her mom. Her mom was had a master's degree, was part of this whole school. She was part of this thing called Head Start, if you've ever heard of that. She was the principal. She's running all this. But for some reason some reason she was just crazy when she got around her daughter so this is where she ended up getting into a relationship somewhere she ends up getting a relationship with the boy and one of the problems she had was that her boyfriend wanted to end up taking not taking her virginity but her boyfriend wanted to lose her virginity with her together well this caused problems because she had already gone through all this stuff with all these men and ended up resenting him and hating him because of these things. And so she ends up losing this boyfriend, which uh, based off of how she tells the story, she ends up crying. She's basically, um, it's one of the saddest moments in her life. And so when she breaks up with this boyfriend, this leads us into the next part. As you're going to hear, she's going to find this man who is much older than her. And it leads to some problems down the road. And, and, uh, and, at these like parties that I was going to when I was that age, um, I would just like get wrecked and then just like act like a slut. Like as soon as I was drunk, I wanted to take my clothes off and I wanted people touching me and talking to me and taking me places. Like I wanted it. I felt like that was like what I was supposed to do. And, um, and like obviously he couldn't, take that like he wanted to stay together too and he wanted to stay friends and everything and then I'd like give him a hug and it's trying to turn into more and I like couldn't handle that and uh, eventually we fully broke it off this is like before I even turned 16 and um, shortly thereafter I had my 16th birthday drunk on like the floor of someone's trailer watching fireworks on TV and um, it was about a week after that, I went to another party in town at this place called the Grange Hall. It's like a barn, basically, where people have like bigger parties in town. And so I went there to see um, like friends of a friend who were playing in a band there. And after they finished playing, I went outside to see like what's happening afterward. And there was one guy who's like, I think he was probably like 19 or 20 at the time. And I'd seen him at a few different parties. He and his girlfriend were like known to like kind of coordinate a lot of this stuff. So I went up to him. I was like, what's going on tonight? Where's the party? And he said, oh yeah, like we're gonna go with my friend Jeremy. We're gonna drive up to Trout Lake. There's gonna be a ton of people there. And so I got in the car with those two and his friend Jeremy and we went up to Trout Lake, which is an even smaller town that's like 20 minutes like up into the woods. They have one gas station and like a little like corner store. And we get to Jeremy's house and it's just this guy and his girlfriend and Jeremy. And Jeremy on the way up there was talking about like he just got divorced. So I'm thinking like he's like old as fuck. Okay, so this man, Jeremy, okay, what ends up happening, and I'll let her tell a little bit if we get to that point, but what en ends up happening is she ends up getting with this man named Jeremy. Jeremy ends up taking her back to his house, right, and everybody leaves. She goes to bed because she didn't want to go back to her mom's house, so she thought she just might as well spend the night, and so Jeremy ends up doing things to her while she's sleeping. 
And she was perfectly, she says she's perfectly, she was okay with that because that's what she was used to. She wasn't used to the romantic part of it. She was used to somebody just having their way with her. And she's just existing in that space. As time goes on, and she'll tell this little bit of the story, but as time goes on, she ends up deciding to try to stay with this man. And her mom ends up not liking it at all and then ends up kicking her out of the house. Okay. And so that's why she ends up with this man. But I'll let her tell a little bit more of the story. And uh, after some time had gone by with this guy, Jeremy, my brothers caught on to what was happening because, like I said, everyone knows everyone and people knew Jeremy and those same people knew my brothers and word got to my brothers that this like 30 year old man was like in a relationship with me and I, I had just turned 16. And my brothers at that point in my life, it was so weird because like it felt we never really like bonded that well because there's such a huge age gap and our experiences at home were so different. And as soon as they could move out, they did, which was when I was like 11 and 12. And uh, so I wasn't like close with them in that way. But when they heard about this, they went and found Jeremy at work and they like cornered him and beat him up. And I guess like, well, I don't want to say something like incriminating, but they like really fucked him up. And then he stopped talking to me for a couple days. And I know this sounds weird, right? But like, I couldn't fucking handle it. I couldn't handle being like left by him. Like after I've like decided that that's where I wanted to be, um, I was just like so upset that I would have to like go back. And so I would not leave him alone. And basically we had this arrangement where like he would come into my hometown and then have me like hide in the back seat of his car so he could take me back to his house. And things went like that for a little bit. <clears throat> and then um, my mom was aware of the situation after that too and told me that I like could not come home after that. And uh, so I stayed with Jeremy. And then when I was 17, I got pregnant and um, at the time I was trying so hard to act like him and like emulate that age and that like maturity level and like life experience and stuff. I was like. So she continues on. She gets uh, she gets engaged to this guy. They end up getting married. And at this point in time, she ends up working at a place called Big Five, which was just a retail place. And it's here at the Big Five. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> Here at the Big Five, uh, she ends up she ends up finding a recruiter's wife, and that recruiter's wife ends up telling her about the military. So she ends up going to the military. Well, unfortunately for her, in in the midst of getting ready for the military and getting ready to you know get into basic training and all this stuff, she thought she was going to be making all this money. So her husband at the time decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and divorce this girl. And so she had somebody read it to her. Sorry that the screen was cut off. She has somebody read it to her. And after somebody reads this to her and tells her, hey, it's just a regular divorce, nothing to worry about. She ends up finding out here later that he decided that he was going to actually take custody of the child. And not only that, that she was going to pay child support back child support that she was going to have to owe. So she ended up signing documents that made her pay, pay child support and lose custody of her son in the same breath. So let's go ahead and get to this part. For me, but unfortunately what ended up happening is as I was approaching my ship date for basic training, he like preemptively filed for divorce and I was like, not to make excuses, but I was a dumbass kid and I asked somebody else to read the court paperwork for me and be like, what am I about to sign? Can you explain to me like what this says? What is this? And they said like, oh, it's like nothing is going to change. Everything's going to stay the same. It's there's no changes. You're just going to be divorced. And I was like, fuck, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And it turns out that I was like agreeing to not have custody of our child anymore and also agreeing that I owed him back child support for months and I signed it <laughs> like happily, willingly signed that. And uh so 
as I was saying, that's what she ends up doing. She ends up signing this paper. She gets a little bit deeper into the military. And this is going to tell a quite of a lengthy story about the military. And I'm just going to go over that for you guys because that's about eight. It's about a 20, 25 minute story that I'm not going to make you guys sit through. So I explained the whole thing, but I'm going to let her just talk a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and get into that. And in the midst of that, as sloppy and stressful as everything was, while I was at AIT, I met my second husband, and he was my age, like a couple years older than me, like the most like physically fit, like normal looking guy probably in our class. And so when he started giving me attention at AIT, I was thinking like, one, I didn't think I had it like this, and two, like, this will really be my new life. Like I'll have a spouse that's my age that I'm really happy with and really attracted to. And then like we can be together and that can make it even easier for me to get my son back. But um, once I graduated and moved to Colorado with my second husband. He ends up being volatile. So let me go ahead and explain this story. Okay. And I think this is very important because when I get to the my um, ending of this and hoping it all makes sense, I want y'all to understand why um, I believe that she's on the path to doing something better, but at the same time, I feel like she's kind of reverting back. So let me go ahead and tell you what happens between here and there. I do have some notes to make sure I don't get off on a tangent here. Okay, so what she ends up doing, she ends up getting with this husband. And he ends up being very volatile towards her. He ends up being a serial cheater and it ends up causing a lot of problems all the way to the point to where they keep getting into it so often that the cops are being called that she finally decides that she's going to go go ahead and move back around her hometown with her old friend whose name is Gibby. OK, so she ends up staying with the friend Gibby, but because she doesn't know how to control her emotions, she ends up neglecting Gibby and ends up just pretty much cutting her off, even though Gibby was the whole reason she was able to even start getting back on her feet. So while she's doing all that, she ends up trying to get a vehicle from this couple from her church. This couple from church lets her borrow the vehicle so she can get back and forth to work. And in the midst of all this, she also sometimes stays with this other couple in a garage. So after she decides to cut off Gibby, Gibby calls her up one day while she's at work and says, hey, look, they want their car back, and if they don't have their car back in the next couple hours, they're going to call the police and say it was stolen. You can no longer stay with me. You can forget all of that. And so within the midst of her being at work, she ends up getting not having a vehicle. She doesn't have a vehicle, and she ends up not having a place to stay anymore because the couple she was staying with no longer wants to have her because of all the stuff that she's doing. She's continued to be this kind of you know how somebody's going through something emotional they decide that they're going to cut everybody off anytime an ex or something comes back into the picture well her husband starts to slowly come back in the picture they slowly start to talk so because she gets kicked out because she lose the vehicle she decides to move back home with her old husband right and everything is going awful as you would expect right so she ends up getting deployed she ends up finally getting deployed and going to Afghanistan. And this is where the crux of the story gets a little bit wild. I'm going to let her explain a tad bit of it, if I could find that exact spot. But I'm going to explain the rest. Let's get back to it. He is like stiff body, like rattling in the back of the truck. And I couldn't fucking believe it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tell this part then. We're a little bit far ahead. I didn't know if I was going to tell this part or not. But I'll go ahead and explain the story. She's talking about somebody rattling in the back of a truck. So while she's off deployed, living her life because she thinks she really wants to be deployed, she really wanted to get away from her husband. She really wanted to get on with her life. She's going through all this field training and life is supposed to be going much better. So she's chilling one day. Well, she's not chilling, but she's doing her normal deployment. She's got these drones running around. And for some reason, somebody runs up to the area where they're all stationed and starts shooting at the base. Not close, but pretty far away. Not enough to hurt anybody. They're shooting at the base with a pistol, right? And so they look at the boy, okay? They look at this, well, not boy, but they're looking at this man. This man is sitting there shooting at the pistol, and they call the police. So the police comes along. Um, the, the police in the area, 
the, the police come along. They're in Afghanistan, I believe. And so they call that police force. They come, they see the person, but they don't come too close because they don't know what's going on. They can't identify him. So they, they start to come along. Well, this man who is just randomly shooting at the base decides to look at the police. He looks at the police and he goes ahead and dunks down, right? Dunks down and then they wait. The police wait. The people at the, her, her people are waiting and they wait for the person to stand back up. As soon as this person stands back up, they look at him. They identify. They see a man with a beard. They're like, okay, this is one of the people that we were supposed to be worried about. So this man with the beard looks just like who we were supposed to, who we thought it was going to be. So let's go ahead and gun him down. So they get on the 50 caliber and they just gun -g 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 him down. Right. I mean, it obliterate this individual. Right. So. Everything's fine. She doesn't care. Nobody cares. Life is going forward. Well, what ends up happening, right, is that when they go to go get this, uh, when they go to get this man, you know, he's just sitting there dying in the sun. She's getting kind of messed up because it's just somebody dying. She doesn't like the man, but she's also like, what's going on? Well, what ends up actually happening is that this man did not have a beard at all. In fact, what uh, happened was that this man, when he dunked down into the grass ended up shooting himself in the face, right? And because he shot himself in the face, he obviously blew his jaw off. And when he blew his jaw off, it and blood started running down based off the camera footage they have, which was not very good camera footage. It looked like the man had a beard because of the jaw hanging and blood coming down. And then after this, they learned that this was not a man. It was actually a young 12 year old boy. So what they thought was a man with a beard was a 12 year old boy who had saw the police dunk down, shot himself in the mouth, jaw hanging, blood everywhere, stood up and got gunned down by this 50 caliber round. So after that, the boy got left there for a few hours until somebody finally came and picked him up as he was burning up in the sun. And this ended up messing her up to the point where she's starting to have PTSD. And so she's so screwed up because she was like, how could this happen? We made a mistake. We ended up gunning down a boy. And because of all this, the people who were in the Afghanistan place, they, they did this for a reason. They would send out young boys to go out there and do stuff and shoot at the base so they would get gunned down. And then they would use that as propaganda to say, look, they're killing our children. And she was just messed up about all of this. So disoriented, which leads us to what happens next. All right, let's get to it. I be dead so bad. I want to be gone so bad. Like, it's so uncomfortable to just exist because, you know, I worked so hard to get away from one thing and then it's on to the next thing. I worked so hard to get away from that thing and fix it and then it's on to the next thing. And then, I, and then I'm like back through the shit with my second husband and I've got to work hard and get through that shit. And then deployment again, it felt like a huge opportunity and something that was really going to like 180 things for me. But um, it just seemed to dig me deeper and deeper and keep pushing me back. So, um, so I started talking to the psychiatrist and uh, he explained to me, he's like, you, we can manage this. We can get you on medications. You can do this or you can be medically discharged because you have PTSD that will discharge you for that. And so I just took him up on that and uh, I was like, let me, let me get the fuck out of here because I can't do this anymore. As badly as I wanted this, as badly as I wanted to like complete a career and like do good and be worth something and make all this money um i just like i couldn't fucking do it and i didn't care anymore and uh it started to become like really hard to like find a way to put anything into my son right because i was just like you know he's a child i love him so much i would never do anything bad to my son right but like it was it, that, you know, mothering should come fairly naturally, right? And I felt like I had to, like, force myself to take care of him. And, like, that was making me hate myself even more because uh, I was like, this isn't coming naturally. And, and it's, like, so much work to just give him the bare minimum. And he deserves so much more than that. And uh, so once I got out, um, 
it was crazy. As I was getting out, COVID hit. And uh, it was actually, I was at a voluntary 30-day inpatient program called Strong Hope in Utah. So, okay, so this is, uh, I'm going to move forward a little bit here. So pretty much what ends up happening is she does this, the whole COVID thing happens. So she and her and her husband aren't getting along once again. So she decides she's going to move to Hawaii where her father is, who's in hospice. And she's going to move there with her, uh, her older brother. So she ends up going to Hawaii. And that's where um, things take a little bit of a turn. Caring about it. And I wanted to do something easy. And so with COVID, with, you know, everything else that's happening right now and OnlyFans being such a huge thing, I decided to get into that a little bit for easy money. Somehow I had like, I mean, not like a lot of people following me on social media and stuff, but enough that like immediately I was raking in like so much money doing that. And uh, I started to feel like, you know, I don't really give a shit like what this looks like to anybody anymore. I just want to like make my money and like, and just enjoy my life for once. I was in Hawaii and making easy money. I had like, I had to spend 10 minutes a day to make like 30 grand in a month, you know, like, it was a no brainer for me for a long time. But um, I also like started to feel kind of burnt out on just doing the same shit all the time and having to talk to these people because that's another part of that. You don't get to just like post pictures and videos. You need to like respond to people and send out more shit for them to pay for. And I just didn't want to keep talking to these people because they've got all these expectations. And uh, and I was just, I don't I don't care about those people you know like i was like just look at me that's it and then give me your money and that's all i want like but um one person that was uh subscribed to my only fans found after he found my only fans he found my instagram and uh he messaged me a few times saying like, I'm on the big island too. Can I like take you out to coffee? Can I take you to dinner or whatever? And I'm thinking like this, another person that thinks I'm going to be like a prostitute and they can meet up for a date and then like pay and have me for like the whole night or whatever. And I don't want to deal with that shit. And so I put it off and put it off. And then eventually he like started saying some like genuinely nice things to me. Like, hey, like it seems like you're not having a very good day. Are you doing OK? Or like I'd post something about like how I was feeling or whatever. And he'd be like really nice and supportive about it. So eventually I was just like, yeah, like let's go get coffee at like my favorite place. And in my mind, I'm thinking like this guy's going to be weird as hell but I'm gonna have my coffee and dip. But um, he ended up being great and that's my boyfriend now. Um, and he's got like an awesome job in Virginia. And so my son and I, after a while, of course, um, but not long enough by most- That's pretty much where the story ends. Um, she just goes on to how they moved to Virginia and they're having a good life. Um, I've watched, I've always watched the whole video. I don't see, um, if she's still doing the OnlyFans or whatnot. So this is where we're going to have a little bit of a um, uh, disagreement here. <clears throat> so we started this whole story with her being taken advantage of at four years old to nine years old. We go from that to her also being taken advantage of again at about 15 to 16 by a 30 year old man. Right. We go from that to her being with the man who was also very volatile and cheated on her constantly. At this point in the story, she's also lost her other son because as she said, or y'all might have heard just a tad bit of it. Oh no, y'all didn't hear any of it. I'll explain that too. She ended up not going back to her old son because the guy, Jeremy, if y'all remember, he got remarried and now the stepmom is actually mothering the child. So she decided to never go back and get custody of her firstborn son. So right now she's only got her second husband's son and they're now moving to Virginia or they currently live in Virginia with this man. So if you can trace the steps, everything that got her to this point, let me get a drink of water because I'm about to do a lot of talking here. Trace all the steps that got her to her. Her life started off in trafficking. I mean, in a way, right? 
because her mom was taking literally taking her to men to have them do things to her. Right. She goes from there to also doing the same thing. Then goes to another husband. Thing thing falls apart. She decides to start an OnlyFans and breaking in all this money. And then she goes and finds a man who is subscribed to her OnlyFans. Let's start with the OnlyFans part. She has not escaped her past. She is still doing the same thing because she is still using her body after what these men did to her, which was disgusting. She's now also using her body because that's what she's used to. She says it. She's used to that kind of life. So she's now selling her body once again on OnlyFans. You can already hear her saying she was getting burned out. We all know how OnlyFans ends for a lot of these models. It's not good. The only kind of men that you end up getting in your DMs and stuff like this is or men who are creepy who start to get worse and worse and they start having all these expectations like she said only fans is not empowering to females only fans is exactly what you heard of not in all cases but in her case it is somebody who came from a background of having men use her body and then she goes into a place where she thinks now using her body makes a whole lot more sense because she's making money off of it but we slowly she's destroying herself slowly she's giving it away again slowly she's going back to her roots slowly she's allowing these men to do things to her again but because she's so blinded by the money she can't see that she's selling herself off like this it is going to end up having repercussions worse and worse and worse to her mental health because she she hasn't escaped all the stuff that she's been through now let's move on to the man and here's my problem, too, is because everybody said this was a happy ending. I went through all the comments, unless White Belly themselves, this is soft White Belly, by the way, unless they de they deleted all the comments, I went through quite a bit of them. And not one comment mentioned the fact that she went into OnlyFans, which was a direct, direct result of the life she's been living up to this point. Right. And nobody mentions that her boyfriend, they've said that this is a good guy. Remember, remember her second husband. Right, the one that she left in Colorado. She said the same things. She said he was a nice guy. He was good looking, but he ended up being worse. She went after a guy who was subscribed to her OnlyFans, found her on Instagram, and said, Let's go on a date. What kind of men do you think subscribe to OnlyFans? I'll wait. Mm, do you think those are normally good men? If you found out a man was subscribed to another woman's OnlyFans, let's say you weren't trying to date him, what would you think about him? A man who is paying for images of a woman who is doing seductive things and we know what kind of stuff goes on on OnlyFans. Uh, enough for her to be bringing in 30 grand a month. She's probably doing some pretty seductive things, right? She's doing some things that would not, obviously not safe for work at all. What kind of men pay for that? I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. The kind of men who pay for this kind of services are men who are deeply addicted to adult entertainment. These men are addicted to the pornography. They are addicted to doing this to the point where they are paying for it. So much so that he is so deeply entwined with the parasocial relationship that you guys are having. He decides to hit you up. He doesn't even live in the area. He has to go back to Virginia because he doesn't live in Hawaii. So now she is with a man who is clearly addicted to pornography because he is paying for his service for one woman. And we know if he subscribed to one OnlyFans model, he subscribed to multiple uh, OnlyFans models more than likely. OK, that's how the porn world works. You don't get satisfied with just one person. So she is now with a man who has been looking at pornography, who is used to seeing women as objects because he's so deep entrenched in the lie. And he takes you on a date because he's a nice guy. You think that's enough for him to be worthy of getting with moving your son all the way out to Virginia. She hasn't escaped people. Now, I don't think the point of this video was to show that she has a better life, but that's what a lot of people in the comment section were saying. Over and over, I saw, oh, she's made it out. She's so much better than she was. Tell me where you saw the improvement. Because I don't see any improvement from when she was young and got with that 30-year-old man to now. Nothing has changed. She is still using her body in an unhealthy way because she has not dealt with things she even mentions and laughs around this area says i know i'm gonna need a lot of counseling 
You haven't done the work to the point you're going out with men who paid for your OnlyFans who saw you as a sexual, a sexual object. You think he was paying for your OnlyFans because he cares? He just wanted to be your friend? And she's like, he was so genuine and nice. You don't know how to have a relationship. You've had... You had men do things to you when you were a young child, which was despicable. You end up getting with one man who is 30 years old while you were still a teenager. Despicable. You get with another man who you said was great, ended up being volatile and a serial cheater. That didn't go well. And now you think that you know how to be able to look at men in the right light and you haven't had any counseling, any therapy, have even tried to deal with it. You watch something horrible happen in the military. So you're dealing with PTSD. You've got a son. You're a single mother. You started an OnlyFans to make money. And now you're going to get with somebody who subscribed to your OnlyFans who is addicted to pornography that's what you think is a good man because he's genuinely nice you are lost young lady you are lost okay this is what I and I'm not trying to make this so personal but we just well I mean I, I literally had to sit down and watch this for about this is an hour video but obviously to take notes and make sure I got most of this right <clears throat> it took about three hours so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit deep into it but what I'm trying to say is that this woman has not escaped this dark, dark world. Okay? Y'all know how I feel about OnlyFans models. But I do want to say this. There is something she said that I didn't show you guys that did. This is why I watch these kind of videos because I have to humanize these people. I have to. Because there's two things that end up happening normally when you get into a certain world. You end up saying, oh, this woman's terrible. She's she's this. She just wants to sell her body. She's disgusting. And then I have to look into the other world where, yes, she could be a victim and all this stuff. While she was 14 and 16, she taught, tells the stories about, you know, how she gets called a slut, how she gets called these things, how she gets called a whore, how her mom says she was these things. She's getting called all these names. So she just gets into it. So. Uh, some part of me has to say that I know she's in OnlyFans because she doesn't know anything different. I can't give her the excuse because evil for evil, I can't vibe with. She is doing something that is causing other men to also fall. These young men are committing evil by looking at her body in a naked way, but she's also providing that for monetary gain. She's giving out her bodies and also causing other men to stumble. So I, I both are wrong in these parties. But her past has not been dealt with. So, of course, I would expect her to do something like this that is ruining other people's lives as well as her own lives. And let's not forget, she has a son. She has a son who knows that her father, the only reason her, I mean, I'm assuming we, we're assuming that they grow up, right? Her son is going to know that her, his mom is selling her body on the Internet and that the man in his life currently is only with his mom because he saw her on the Internet online selling her body. He literally subscribed to her to sit at home and get in front of a screen and touch himself to her. And then he takes her out a date because he was genuinely nice. His, her, he's going to know that his mom was completely lost. I'm hoping she has found her way and she's doing much better, but I can only go off with the information I have right now. I'm not going to go digging deep, 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 deep into her past to see how she's doing because it would take years and years of therapy for her to get out of all this. She literally didn't get out of the military that long with the PTSD. I think this video is from a year ago. No, this video was this year. Okay. This video is from this year. We're assuming the interview probably happened months prior. So let's say it's been two years since she had the PTSD moment and then she moved to Hawaii. So another year, around another year went by. So it's only been two years. So she started these OnlyFans and got with this man. And she even said herself, she moved way too fast moving in with this man way too quickly. This girl has not had any concept. Why are we praising her in the comment section? This is what happens to these young women. Y'all see a young woman, you see a young woman get with the guy and that he's nice and you think she got her whole life together. Guys, did you watch the video? Because I watched the entire video. At no point did anything tell me she's got her life together just because she's able to hop on camera. That is not the point of soft belly videos if you watch them. They're not to tell you a happy ending. People are just telling their stories. That's it. It is not a, they're a survivor of uh, bad crimes, but it's not to say, hey, uh, this is what's happening. She's now running a business and she's now CEO of a company. No, they're just telling their stories. And her story ends with, I'm an OnlyFans model who got with the man who is addicted to pornography and I'm going to raise my son around him. 
and people are praising that in the comment section. Y'all go look at it yourself. <sighs> and people are saying, oh, I cried and all this and all that. I didn't cry a single tear because I'm not I'm not sad for her in this way. I'm sad of what she's doing and what she's doing to her son. But I'm not sad as if this is a happy ending. That's what people were crying about. They thought this was a happy ending. It's not. Her son is doomed if something doesn't change. She cannot be raised around a porn addicted father. I mean, man. And her mother is a porn star in a way. We cannot. That is not a happy ending. Nobody even thought about the child. All the comments were about her when I saw it. Nobody thought about the son. That he's getting moved to all these different places. And now they live in Virginia where he's close to his grandparents is what she says. This is going to end badly. Unless that man gets therapy for his porn addiction, clearly. And not only that, his porn addiction, how is it not going to be fulfilled by getting with a porn star on OnlyFans? That is not a good combination, people. It's not. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Um, do y'all think that this was a good ending? Y'all think this was a good story? I don't think it was at all. And I think we need to start opening our eyes because I'm just getting so sick of people thinking OnlyFans is a success story. It's so dumb. You don't get, you don't become an OnlyFans model, get with one of your subscribers and then life is great because he was nice to you. She doesn't know what that means, guys. So... Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all think this is a happy ending? Y'all think all is good and all is great? Or do y'all think that this, <laughs> this story goes on and on and on? Goodbye.